On September 11, 2001, 2,972 people from more than 80 countries were killed, leaving thousands of loved ones behind. While grieving continued for many, some began to move beyond their personal pain. I want to meet with the NSA, CIA, and the FBI together in one room. Out of the many who were researching on their own, four widowed mothers found each other. New Jersey residents Mindy Kleinberg, Patty Casaza, Lori Van Aken, along with Kristen Breitweiser, became known as the Jersey Girls. We became friends and like-minded. We all had questions. We all had questions and we wanted answers. I have questions myself. I had many questions after 9-11. Um, uh, I'd like to know about the whole Sandy Berger thing. Uh, that just seems weird, and it seems to me that Bush and Clinton were in on that one, both sides. I'd like to know about that one. You have a right to peacefully, reasonably question your government. You have a responsibility to do that. At the top of the family's growing list of questions, why had the U.S. military defenses failed to stop any of the four hijacked planes? The FAA alerted U.S. air defense units of a possible hijacking at 8.38 Tuesday morning. The last plane was reported to have crashed in Pennsylvania just after 10 a.m. That's almost two hours, <laughs> you know, where planes were flying around the skies of the United States with no military response. How could Flight 77, which reportedly hit the Pentagon, had flown back towards Washington, D.C. for 40 minutes without being detected by the FAA's radar or even the superior radar possessed by the U.S. military. Only two days after the invasion of Afghanistan, the Times of India reported the FBI discovered credible evidence that $100,000 was wired to alleged hijacker Mohammed Atta by 9-11 paymaster Omar Saeed Sheikh on the orders of the ISI director, Lieutenant General Mahmoud Ahmed. In the days, in the days following 9-11, you met with the head of Pakistani ISI, General Mohammad Ahmed. It has since come to light that he ordered Saeed Sheikh to wire $100,000 to Mohammed Atta. Why was he allowed to go back to Pakistan? And why was he questioned? And why were you meeting with him? I met with him to deliver a message that if he didn't, if he didn't stop supporting the Taliban, we would take him out. Why did we let him go? We let him fly uh, freely. We never investigated him. We never even looked uh, into him. But look. But look. There's thing called diplomatic passports. Why did the Bush administration cover up the fact that the head of the Pakistani intelligence agency was in Washington the week of 9-11 and reportedly had $100,000 wired to Mohammed Atta, considered the ringleader of the hijackers? They wondered about the lack of immediate response by the president and his Secret Service detail. President Bush was in a Florida elementary school classroom that morning, where he sat for more than seven minutes after being informed of the second attack. Why did the Secret Service allow Bush and uh, to complete his elementary school visit, apparently unconcerned about his safety or of that of, of the school children? In April 2001, this informant told the FBI that on a separate issue, he had obtained information about al-Qaeda bin Laden issuing an attack in the United States that would involve five major cities and it will involve airplanes and that the attack was going to take place within the next few months. We met other whistleblowers on the side of the road of Maryland. <laughs> they had information and basically the government knew, you know, other than the exact moment, they knew the date and the method at which the attacks were supposed to come. Let me again ask you this question. If you believe that about your government, wouldn't you want to find out who in our government was trying to kill innocent Americans? 3,000 innocent Americans? Wouldn't that be a top priority?